the um, background for the interest in the security research uh, community uh, is uh, is based on an extensive literature on the implications of demographic change, uh, assuming that demographic change will have fundamental uh, development, political and uh, security consequences. We are seeing currently shifting demographic weights uh, globally. Uh, we are seeing population aging in the global north and we're seeing age structure transitions and especially large youth populations in the global south. In addition, we're seeing rapid urbanization uh, and all of this has been described in uh, recent work by Jack Goldstone uh, and others. Um, the um, uh, study is uh, starting from a perspective of looking at patterns of armed conflict globally uh, as well as regionally in sub-Saharan uh, Africa. On the uh, screen here you can see to the left uh, armed conflict uh, events that have been collected by the University of Uppsala, the UCDP conflict database. To your right you can see data on global uh, from the global terrorism database. Uh, and they overlap to some extent, uh, displaying quite significant levels of uh, armed conflicts and other forms of political violence in select uh, countries, uh, specifically uh, in um, countries like uh, Mali, uh, Nigeria and uh, um, Central African Republic, as well as high levels in uh, other countries in the region. Uh, and uh, Africa as a continent has seen increasing uh, number of conflicts in the past uh, decade. Moving uh, on to um, looking at the global distribution of youth, if you can see the dotted line here, uh, that is the uh, proportion of youth uh, in the world population. Uh, the solid line is the absolute number of youth. Youth is here defined as uh, those between 15 and 24 years of age. Uh, and the proportion of youth is measured as um, 15 to 24 year olds as proportion of the adult population 15 years uh, and above. So the proportion uh, of youth uh, uh, peaked in the uh, 1970s and has been declining uh, ever since. However, uh, it's important to acknowledge that there are major um, uh, regional differences. Uh, and we're looking now at some regional uh, trends, some selected uh, regions. And uh, in the mid 1980s, uh, you can see the three lines for uh, Sub-Saharan Africa, for uh, the Middle East and North Africa, and for Asian countries were roughly at the same level with uh, approximately 27-28% of the population uh, being adult population being youth between 15 and 24. And we've seen since then a significant decline in youth bulges in both the Middle East, North Africa region and in uh, Asia, uh, while we've seen a, a relatively consistently high uh, level of youth in the adult population in Sub-Saharan Africa. Uh, and even though there are, uh, there is some variation, uh, there is also um, uh, a generally high level across most states in Sub-Saharan uh, Africa. Uh, we know uh, from the uh, uh, statistical studies of global samples of uh, countries, uh, including the ones that uh, have been prepared for this uh, study, uh, that um, youth bulges are associated with an increased risk of armed uh, conflict as well as for non-violent um, uh, activity. Uh, so different forms of both uh, political uh, violence and other forms of non-violent uh, disturbance. This is uh, linked both to uh, what we often refer to as motives and uh, opportunities. Uh, we're talking about low opportunity cost being a driving factor where uh, the, um, the employment potential of the potential employment uh, benefits are relatively limited in uh, many um, cases for young people. Uh, the uh, cost of rebel uh, recruitment is relatively low. Uh, we're looking at problems of relative cohort size where 
where the new incoming cohorts are larger than the predecessors, which is putting a, uh, a pressure on wages uh, through higher levels of unemployment. And it's important also to say that there are some very significant conditional effects. Demography does not work in isolation. Uh, we um, find very clearly that uh, youth bulges are mattering for uh, for, uh, and, and are associated with armed conflicts, in particular in low education settings. And then I'm talking about uh, lower uh, levels of secondary uh, education. And we also find quite strong effects uh, showing that large youth bulges is primarily a problem and a challenge in high fertility context. So as fertility is starting to decline, the impact of youth bulges is also declining. Um, uh, as, uh, as has been uh, addressed by a number of, of other speakers and, and which is at the core of uh, the uh, interest of the UNFPA, uh, it's important also to emphasize that uh, these large youth cohorts can be a phenomenal resource and a demographic bonus. Um, the, uh, the, the, the basis uh, for this, uh, for the achievement of this demographic bo bonus, is that you're also seeing decl declining dependency ratios coinciding then with this increase in labor supply, so that it is possible to shift investments away from schooling and healthcare uh, and into uh, sectors that contribute to spur the economy. Uh, and the demographic dividend, as is always uh, or often referred to, it is estimated to have contributed to very significant um, economic development in other parts of the world, most notably with the Asian tiger economies, where roughly a third of the economic growth at the height of these, uh, the, this economic boom uh, has, been has been associated with demographic change alone. Uh, and it's important also to note that it's conditional labor market and human uh, capital investments. And turning to the uh, latter point, um, uh, I think it's uh, it's important to acknowledge the very significant increase that we've seen uh, in uh, education, especially when it comes to gross enrollment in primary education in many states uh, in the Sahel. Uh, however, there remains uh, significant challenges with respect to secondary uh, education, uh, as we see from, from this graph, ranging between the low 20s to uh, the uh, 40 plus. Uh, and this is the, the domain, the category of education, which is absolutely necessary in order to realize uh, the demographic dividend. And if we look at, a, uh, not the age distribution, but the, uh, the gender distribution of education, it's also important to emphasize that Sub-Saharan Africa has had a uh, lower growth rate uh, in secondary education for women. Uh, as compared to many other um, regions of the world, even though there had been significant increase uh, and, and progress also here. Um, this, uh, this is um, uh, reflecting also uh, back on population, as, as many of the experts in this, uh, in this uh, meeting will know. Um, this is a, a population projection for Niger in 2050 based on two very different education scenarios. The top one is, is one where uh, basically we're, we're not uh, expanding education beyond uh, the level uh, that, has to, uh, that we have today. The bottom one is a fast track scenario with uh, massive increases in secondary education. Uh, and the bottom, uh, Nigeria is both a, a, a smaller population, a more educated population, uh, and a more balanced population age-wise, uh, which, uh, which also translates into greater economic prospects and uh, greater prospects for peace and stability. Okay, two, two minutes left, Professor. Uh, Thank you very much. Okay. Then I'll, I'll just uh, give you uh, just a brief sense of where we are today. You can see these are the support ratios for the Asian tiger economies. Uh, and South Korea had, if you look at the red line here, is the support ratio, and the blue line is youth bulges. So South Korea, uh, through its growth period, had increasing support ratios. If we're looking at, uh, at the challenge of Nigeria today, it's quite clear that uh, the support ratio uh, is still uh, roughly uh, at or below uh, 100, uh, which, uh, which makes for... Uh, a, a quite a requirement for a quite significant decline in fertility before support ratios can rise significantly. 
Then just to to end on a note, uh, because this is related also to the to the major um, age um, transition change that is happening, and that's the uh, the uh, major urbanization that we're seeing in the world today, with Sub-Saharan Africa being the most rapidly urbanizing uh, part of the world. And it's important to underscore that urbanization is is part of the solution, as uh, as seen from from our perspective, and not the problem uh, in that um, uh, it requires though that that we are providing for sustainable urbanization uh, and uh, the uh, what we find from the literature on uh, on urbanization and security it's clear that rapid urban population growth is not something that is making countries more war prone but the challenge pertains to the outer rim of the urban areas, the peri-urban areas, if we fail to provide for sustainable urbanization. And this relates to infrastructure, uh, including sanitation, energy, transportation. It pertains to ensuring equal access to these services, to developing sufficiently quality housing, and of course, to providing employment opportunities. Thank you.